Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got this 2018 Mercedes GLC in today. Just got an issue with it. Engine warning lights on the dash. Just going to put a quick video together just to run you through the fault code that we've got. It's relating to knock sensor number two. It's got two knock sensors on it. Um, but basically it's relating to the knock sensor. I'm going to get it up in the air. I'm going to show you the location of some of the items um, to do with the AdBlue system. Then we'll run you through some of the wiring checks and actually do the tests on it test the knock sensor and if we can prove the knock sensor if the wiring checks out okay we'll then go on to actually replacing the knock sensor run you through any of the work that needs to be done on the diagnostic machine after just to like configure the new sensor and then we'll be giving it a decent run and see if we can get this mercedes back on the road but yeah we've done a full code scan already there's quite a few different ECUs to scan through on these Mercedes, so it normally takes a little while. Got a few other faults in there, but nothing too serious. But the main one that we're looking at in the engine control module is P229F91, which is knock sensor 2, has a malfunction perimeter outside the permissible range. So I'll just get it up in the air now and show you the locations of some of the items. And if you're interested in any of the tools or parts used, I'll put links to them all in the description below as well. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. All right, so we've just got the vehicle up in the air now. And just coming from underneath, it's got quite a few under trays on it. If I just show you where we can first see this, the start of the exhaust coming out from the under tray, you've just got your AdBlue injector located there. And then just tucked a bit more towards the front of the flexi pipe there. I don't know if you can just see that, but that's knock sensor number one. And then coming a little bit further back, we've just got this big box there. There's a temperature sensor just located there. And then just on this side of it, we've got two sensors right next to each other. Now, one of these is a knock sensor. This, this one here is knock sensor number two. And this one there is a particle matter sensor. Now, the usual way to identify the difference between them, the knock sensors generally have a 22 mil nut on them, whereas the particle matter sensors have a 24 mil nut. And all I've done at the minute as well is just, I've just undone this little trim cover clips just to access the connectors and everything for the sensors but all I've needed to take off to get that down is just a bit of a selection of some 8mm bolts and some little 10mm plastic nuts there so it's quite straightforward to get down and I'm just going to chop that down just while we test it but if you just another way to determine the difference between the knocks and the particle matter sensors again the particle matter sensors tend to have these little plastic ECU boxes with them Whereas the knock sensors always have these like metal casings on them. So I'm just going to get the camera mounted up now, get the multimeter into place, and we'll just run you through some of the wiring checks that we're going to do. Right, so just rig the multimeter up into place. And I've also just used it just to chuck this cover down as well. So I can try and film all this as best as possible for you. Um, but all I've done with the multimeter, just the black lead on it, I've just connected up. And just use the exhaust here as an earth, so that's a, a decent earth so that we can test everything properly. Uh, you can just see the connector to the knock sensor here. So I'll just try and get the camera up there now. Basically, there's five wires to the knock sensor, and you can just see. Pin one, the first one there, which is the red and green wire. That we're looking, going to be looking for a 12 volt feed there. Pin two, the brown wire is an earth. Pins three and four is the can lines, which is going to be about two and a half volts at each. Should really add up to about five volts between them. And then pin five, another brown wire, which is an earth as well. And we're going to, to test them. We're going to test them at the minute with the connector plugged on. And in the vehicle, I've just got it set on ignition stage two as well. So we can all just test it properly. But the first thing we're going to do is just put the multimeter on the voltage setting. And we'll test that 12 volt and the two can lines. And then we'll go on to show you how to check the earths on a different setting after that. Right, so you can see we're on the voltage there. Now I'm just going to probe in just on pin one, and we should have 12 volts there. You can see we've got that. And then if we now go to pins, pin three, which is the first of the can lines, so we should have roughly about two and a half, 2.3 volts there. And if we go to pin four, the next can line, you can see we've got 2.68 there. So both of them voltages add up to 4.98 volts. That's what we want there. The next thing we're going to do is check the two earths. So to check the earths, 
we're going to go onto the resistance setting, onto the continuity, continuity on the multimeter. So we now just set that on there. We can now check the, res the resistance and continuity on the earth wire. So we'll just put that in on pin two, with the brown wire there. We should get it roughly around to about sort of three to four ohms there. So yeah, we've got good earth there on pin two. And then if we go to pin five, Let's see we've got a good earth there as well so so that's all the wiring to the uh, knock sensor tested and we know it's okay obviously we're not looking at the actual signals coming out of the knock sensor but the main feeds and earths are all good to the actual knock sensor so we're happy with that so the next thing we're going to do is go on to replacing the knock sensor they are a really common issue on these they are quite quite expensive unfortunately i definitely advise you not to try and fit any cheap aftermarket ones because they don't work you can't configure them properly with the diagnostic machines you do need to be fitting genuine ones so i'm just going to put the multimeter away now and we'll just show you quickly how to um, swap the knock sensor over. But yeah, just get it tidied up quick and then we'll run you through that. It's quite a straightforward job. Right, so we've got the multimeter out of the way now, so we're now ready to get the knock sensor off. And the first thing we're gonna do is just undo the connector. To do that, you just simply need to just flick the little gray tab back, just so that you can pinch it up to undo the connector. And then just to get the actual knocks off, you can just see there's just a couple of these little black plastic knots. So really straightforward to get them undone. Uh, so knock sensor's loose now. Now you always want to be having this bit disconnected before you undo the actual nut because you might, chances are you might start spinning it. So, so it doesn't matter with this one too much because obviously it's, it's a faulty unit. Um, but obviously just be careful with your new ones. You always want to nip your nut up first and then locate your sensor bit into place. But yeah, we're just going to have a crack at getting this undone now. Now, all you really need to get this undone is a 22mm spanner, but these knock sensors uh, are quite prone to seasoning and sometimes they don't come out very well. Sometimes they can take the threads out with them. Um, and if they, if they are tight, you might need to get something a little bit better than a spanner. So we've got one of these special knox tools. I do sell these on my store. I'll put a link to them in the description below if you're interested. But basically, that then slots over and gets a decent purchase on it. And if it does take the threads out, we've got a couple of different tools. Got a little chaser there. Again, sell these on the store as well if you're interested, just to clean the threads up afterwards. But normally I've got one of these on standby. I've got a proper tap as well if need be. So it just as like the little center locator so that you can actually do it properly um, because there's like a little stop in the bottom where it bottoms out. So but yeah, I'll put links to them in the description below. Um, we'll just have a go at it now, see how it comes out. So if it's a bit tight, it might need to get some heat on it. But generally, the rear most sensors normally come out okay. It's the ones towards the front that tend to be a bit tighter. So yeah, let's just give it a go, see what happens. Right, so that's the old sensor out. As you can see, didn't come out no bother at all. Threads are nice and clean. I haven't pulled any threads out of the exhaust or anything, so it's absolutely spot on. So they can be a bit of hassle sometimes, but I've always found that most of the time the rearmost ones do tend to come out all right. Um, we've got the new genuine Mercedes one ready to fit, re uh, ready to fit into place. Let's just have a look. It um, should come with some grease on the threads there as well. It's like a bit of ceramic paste. But it's always worth just check your old one against your new one just to make sure it's correct. To make sure the length of your cables and everything is the same. And um, what I'm going to do now is just mount this up into place. Just nip it up. It doesn't need to be silly tight, but just a reasonable nip on there. Uh, and then we'll run you through once we've got it back together anything that needs to be done on the diagnostic machine get the fault all cleared out give it a decent road test and uh, yeah hopefully we can get, get this fault fixed on this one You will notice as well, from on your new one compared to your old one, the nuts tend to get seized onto the shaft, whereas they are actually spinning separately. So when you've got your new one, you can actually just hold it still and nip it up rather than it actually spinning the sensor all the time. So yeah, we'll just nip that up now and get it all back together.
Right, so as you can see, really straightforward to fit back into place. Knock sensors nip back up now, connectors plugged back in, uh, all the clips are all back into place. Next thing I'm going to do now is just secure the under tray back up, then we'll be able to get it back down and get it hooked up to the diagnostic machine. Well, so vehicle's back down, just got it off the ramp now. Um, just turn the ignition on, just on a full code scan, just to save the time waiting. So it does take quite a while to read these on these Mercedes. Now at the minute, because we've had the sensor disconnected, we've now got a couple of fault codes in the engine ECU. You can see we've also got a communication code. Obviously we disconnected the sensor while the ignition was on. So that's just thrown a, a different fault code up, that's all. So just to start with, we're just gonna clear the fault codes. And then we'll go into the special functions and do like the programming procedure for the knock sensor. But for replacing it, tool wise, quite a straightforward job. And just say only a few little items that we needed to use. We didn't need to use the tap. Um, just got the, the little grabber. I mean, obviously, you can just use a spanner, but it's always nice to get a decent purchase with it with one of them um, tools there. Just a little flat bladed screwdriver, a 10mm and an 8mm, and just the multimeter for testing it. But unfortunately these, so they are quite expensive. There is aftermarket ones available, but I definitely wouldn't advise fitting the cheap aftermarket ones. They don't work. I've had, I've tried fitting a couple in the past and always had problems with them. So we always stick with genuine now. But yeah, that's just, uh, see if that's done it. Clear the codes. Yeah, that's everything cleared now. So if we now go into the engine control module, See, no fault codes in there, special functions, teaching processes, and we should have one in here somewhere for the knock sensors. Yeah, so we've just looked down here, we've got reset learn values, and it basically is the same option for doing both of the knock sensors. You can see this one there does the upstream and the downstream knock sensor. See, that's now been successful. And now just simply exit, just restart the vehicle. The light should be off now. But as I said before, it's a little bit tricky with this because it did always clear the fault code anyway. But we're just going to give it a decent road test now and must just make sure that the light stays off. But you can see it's off for now. The sensor's fitted. We know it's been calibrated. So let's just give it a really decent road test now. I'll just update you at the end just to let you know everything's okay. Right, so just got back from road test. Drove absolutely spot on. I don't know if you noticed, but the washer warning light was on the dash before, so just top the washers up. Just wanted to check. It's just a lot of these mercs are quite common to the uh, sensor in the bottle failing, so just wanted to check it wasn't that, just to let the customer know, but it was just a case that the washers was low. But yeah, done about 10 miles, drove absolutely spot on, no warning lights come back on. As I said before, sometimes this fault would actually clear for quite a long time, so it is really going to need um, a little bit longer to be 100% sure. Um, but I'm pretty sure with the test that we've done that it's just going to be down to that knock sensor and we have just done another full diagnostic scan just to make sure and uh, in the engine ECU you can just see nice and clear in there no faults as well so got a few other issues in some of the other ECUs uh, but obviously it's nothing for us to worry about for what we're looking at today might be a job for another day to look at them but yeah um, and if you're interested in any of the tools or parts used just um, click on the description and i'll put links in there as well if you like the video give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time